Okay, hey everyone. Um, I'm going to do kind of an interesting episode today. This is something that almost uh, I don't think I've ever had in the past. And basically, uh, we had a company that took a deposit from us and then ran. And um, I never really had problems in China before. This is kind of my first uh, experience of someone kind of taking our money and running. And uh, he won't respond to any of the messages that I've sent him. So I'm going to go find him at his office and try to get the money back. Uh, not sure if I'm going to be able to record uh, during <laughs> my meeting with him, and I hope he's there. But um, we'll see. If he's there, I'll let you know the story, and um, hopefully it works out. So uh, I'm going to hit the road now and go to his office. Okay, so I just arrived at this uh, um, office space. And I'm gonna go up and see if I can get my money. Um, the guy, it's a little loud. The guy owes us uh, a little more than 3,000 US dollars. And um, I'm hoping he's gonna give it to us. Otherwise we have to call the police and uh, kind of go through an official um, legal dispute here. So uh, wish me luck. Uh, if I can film inside, I will, but I'm not really sure if I can. Um, and I'll let you know what happens after. Okay, here's the building, and uh, we're gonna go up to the 15th floor and see what happens. Hopefully we're successful. Okay, so we finally uh, finished this. Uh, we had to go into his office. We called the police on him. Um, and then we went to the police station and I, actually in China they make you uh, mediate the problem. So both sides need to come to an agreement before each party can leave. And so uh, we write down the problem so that there's a file in the police department. And then uh, once both parties have come to an conclusion, then we can leave. And so we just left about five hours later and um yeah it was a uh, it was quite quite an experience uh okay so i just wanted to end uh the episode uh just by telling everyone a little bit about what happened actually what was the result of, of my journey to try to get my money back and also just a few tips that can protect you uh, when you are doing business in china specifically when you're buying product from china um so within one week uh, we had the company actually kind of follow up with us and they did deposit all of the money that they owed us uh, into my business bank account, which was really good. And I'm surprised at how incredibly smooth it went. Uh, I thought it would gonna be, was going to be a much more difficult battle, but once I did bring evidence, uh, which I'm going to recommend in a second, to the police station and made an official formal report, it made them really realized that I was serious and they returned the money pretty quickly. And then for just a few tips that you can do to protect yourself when you are buying from China. So the first thing is I would recommend to just keep a record of all your conversations. So that could be email or chat. Um, make sure that you don't delete any because you might need to use it in the future if you do have some type of dispute. The second is always have the company that you're working with uh, use the red stamp and stamp their contracts or any official document that they really have to give to you. Uh, even purchase orders would be good as well. So have them stamp it to basically prove that they accept that purchase order and that they're going to follow through and manufacture it. So the stamp is important to put on any of those documents and make sure that you keep uh, those documents in your records. And then also the last thing I would recommend is to save and keep track of any payments that you've done and have a record of them so that when you do or if this were to happen, and of course this isn't legal advice, you do have some concrete documents to back up your claim that, you know, this or that company took your money. And also, you know, surprising to what a lot of people might think, China's arbitration process is actually quite reliable and quite reasonable, uh, especially for foreign buyers. So China as a country obviously wants to create a lot of trust so that people do come and buy and manufacture in China. In order for them to do that, they do have a reasonable 
arbitration process where a foreign company or person can win. So I don't think that you should think that oh, this is hopeless if I do it. Actually, if you have the proper evidence and uh, the person is actually in fall, it's very likely that you will win uh, arbitration. And typically the process is you try to get it without going to the police um, through general dialogue. And if that doesn't work, then you can call the police and um, either you or representative can go to their office and bring them to the police station and make a formal report. And then during that time actually is interesting is they don't let either party leave the police station until there's an agreement made, which is kind of cool. That's why we, I took, you know, it took us five hours to actually leave that police station because I was waiting for them to confirm and commit a date that they would pay us by. And the other party didn't come up with an answer. And so I just sat there and waited until they did. And so that's kind of an interesting part of the object arbitration process. And in the end, if that doesn't work, then you can file a lawsuit uh, or, or sue them to get the money back. Obviously, no one wants it to go that far. Um, but if you do have a problem, do know that it's not hopeless. And make sure to just keep a good record of all of the transactions, uh, purchase orders and contracts that you have. And this will at least help you provide some evidence uh, to help you win a case if for some reason it goes that far. So I hope you kind of enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. It's definitely my first experience having someone take my money in China. And I've been here over 10 years, so it's not common. Um, but if you did like it, please remember to subscribe and like us. And if you have any questions uh, about how to deal with any of these issues, remember to leave them in the comment section and uh, we'll see you next time.